Hey guys, we've got a Whistler CR85 here. It's the uh, black radar detector on the left. There it is, the CR85, and I uh, just got it in the mail today. I'm totally new to the Whistlers, but uh, it has a really cool feature that I wanted to test out, and it's called the uh, laser identifier, or LSID, laser ID, laser identifier. Anyways, the whole idea is it'll actually tell you the pulse rate of the gun that you're being shot with, which is pretty slick. Uh, here you go, I've got a Pro Laser 3 here, PL3, which shoots at 200 pulses per second. And so we'll just go ahead and, uh, I can just shoot the desk and it'll bounce around and it's enough to trigger the detector. So you'll see when I go ahead and pull the trigger. Laser. It'll actually say 200, which represents the pulse rate of the gun, which is pretty slick. So kind of like... Uh, a frequency display on a radar detector, 33.8, 34.7, 35.5, that kind of stuff. You can actually tell with the pulse rate uh, what gun you're being shot with, which is pretty slick. Um, pretty handy feature. There's also the ability to, uh, kind of like band segmentation, you can actually lock out different frequency ranges. So if you get a certain pulse rate constantly in one area and it's always false into laser, you can actually lock out that particular uh, frequency range. It's not tied to GPS or anything, it's just that particular frequency range, kind of like band segmentation. Um, I don't know exactly what those segments are, so I'll just look them up and put them on the screen right here so you can see. And then, if you don't know, well, we'll both find out. Awesome, because I don't know either. So, cool. Uh, there we go. I also wanted to show you, in addition to a gun, just to show you that it's working, uh, I've got right here a laser interceptor tester. It basically... I've um, got a couple different buttons and a little infrared LED. It's a lot like a TV remote, and all it does will just pulse uh, the same pulse rate as a variety of different LiDAR guns, which is great for testing and that kind of stuff. So um, let's see what we've got. I'll do the uh, Stalker slash Stalker LR. Let's give that one a shot. Laser. Oops, and you can't see it, but there it is. So uh, 130 pulses per second. Pretty cool. Let's try another one here. We've got... Uh, down on the bottom, it's the what, LRB 100, 200, Compact, and Marksman. They all share the same pulse rate, so uh, we'll go ahead and fire this one here. That one is 125 pulses per second. So, pretty slick. I like that. A uh, really useful feature just to be able to tell that kind of stuff if you like to geek out on LiDAR. Uh, cool feature. I like it. Probably not really necessary, to be honest, in the real world, um, but I really like it, and it's probably pretty helpful for... Uh, dealing with false alerts and whatnot. Um, something kind of cool I saw just playing around, since it's basically a TV remote uh, or similar principle, I've got the remote here to my TV and you can see if I, I don't know if it'll actually show. Oh, you can see it a little bit there. See the light blinking? Um, if I turn off the lights, this will make it a little bit easier to see. The camera will adjust and you should be able to, yeah, there you go. So that's all it is and we can do the same thing here with this guy. I'm sure he'll show up too. Maybe not as well. I don't know. Anyways, you get the idea. I guess the remote is a more powerful light. But we can do the same thing here and actually point the uh, remote. Laser. Apparently the volume up button on my uh, TV remote <laughs> is uh, 211 pulses per second. Uh, I think it is kind of an average over time. I've seen some weird stuff where... How did it work? So let's try this. I'm gonna shoot it with a couple different guns and 238, 217. So you see how it starts to kind of like jump around? I think there's kind of an averaging process that it does over time. And so like, uh, let's do the PL2, 238, 217. See how it's kind of dropping back down to where it's supposed to be over time? To 200 with just the yeah, that's the PL3, so 200. So yeah, it looks like uh, it does do an averaging. It kind of takes the last couple seconds worth of pulses and uh, averages them all over time to give you the average pulse right there. It's not an instantaneous readout. Okay, so there's also the ability to lock out a particular frequency. So if you're driving around, maybe near the airport, and it has some sensor that keeps triggering your detector, or uh, certain cars that are notorious for... Uh, laser falsing. There's like the Infinity, the Mazda, 
Volvo. I haven't tested it yet with any of these cars, but basically the idea is it can actually tell you the pulse rate that it's getting and you can actually lock out that particular pulse rate. Not a wide range, but that exact pulse rate. So to demonstrate that, I've got my tester here, which has a couple different guns, and I'm going to basically tell it to lock out one of the guns, and then it's going to alert to a different gun. So uh, let's pick the PL2, Pro Laser 2. We'll go ahead and uh, lock this one out. Okay, so we press the quiet button, kind of like a mute button. Uh, we press quiet, and it will go ahead and uh, you saw how the star popped up? If I shoot it again now, you'll see that it will still show it visually, but it's now automatically muted. Uh, whoops. Yeah, it does change and do that kind of weird thing when it starts to uh, lose the signal, just the averaging thing. But yeah, so you saw how it's actually locked out there. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to shoot it with a Pro Laser 3, which is going to be 200. You'll see in this case, it's now going to go ahead and alert to the PL3. But if we go back to the uh, PL2, it should alert, or should go ahead and mute this. There you go. So cool, we got a double beep. 238 displayed with the star and it's now locked out so pretty slick anyways I just wanted to show you guys that I thought it was pretty cool uh, I like that feature and uh, cool thanks for watching